So we get that energy has to be converted, and that generators are made of magnets and wire. But what does the flow of electricity look like? Well, first, let's talk about voltage. In a generator, when the negative pole of the magnet passes near the coil and the electrons rush away from the magnet, we have a positive voltage. And when the positive pole goes by and the electrons rush back toward the magnet, we have a negative voltage. But here's the main point. The words positive and negative are only talking about the direction the electricity is flowing. It's not like a negative voltage means there's less voltage. It just means the electrons are moving toward the magnet. Still confused? Let's take a look at a car as it moves forward and in reverse. The car speeds up to 10 miles per hour and then slows back down to zero. Then it shifts to reverse and moves backward at the same speed. The car's still moving, but since it's going in the opposite direction, it's actually going negative 10 miles per hour. So the car is the electrons and the speed is the voltage. Negative just means it's going in the opposite direction. But you're probably still wondering, what does the flow of electricity look like? Let's look at the car again, but this time, we'll include a graph that shows the car's speed over a period of time. The car speeds up to 10 miles per hour and slows down. And then, like last time, it shifts to reverse and goes negative 10 miles per hour and then slows down. Take a look at the graph. The shape it's created is similar to what's called a sine wave, which is used to show what voltage from an AC generator looks like. So we have our AC generator. And even though most of the time the magnet rotates inside of the coil, to give you a better idea how sine waves work, we'll show the coil spinning around the magnet. As the coil spins, it approaches zero degrees. Since the coil is a circle, it's going to continue rotating to its starting point. But the sine wave it's making has to continue down the timeline. So basically, the circle is just cut in half and the bottom is flipped over. We've still got the shape of a circle, it's just spread out over time. But let's dissect it even further. If we start our generator with the coil between the positive and negative poles, nothing will be moving the electrons, so we'll have zero volts. But when the magnet rotates to 90 degrees, it's closest to the negative pole, and that's going to force the electrons away from the magnet at a maximum rate. This makes what we call a peak positive voltage. When the coil rotates to 180 degrees, it's halfway between the positive and negative poles again, so we're back to zero volts. But once it reaches 270 degrees, it's closest to the positive pole, and the electrons rush back towards the magnet at a maximum rate. This makes a peak negative voltage. And now the coil's back to where it started, and we have zero volts. So, similar to the car's changes in speed and direction, the changes in voltage have made the shape of a sine wave. Every completion of a sine wave in a generator is called a cycle, and the number of cycles a generator completes in a second is known as its frequency, and is measured in hertz. Since generators in the US and Canada run at 60 cycles per second, their frequency is 60 hertz. So the next time you're looking at a power line, remember what electricity looks like and imagine a sine wave, starting in a generator and making its way down the line.